Americans are waking up to headlines like these as Donald Trump becomes the first former president in U.S. history to be indicted. He sent out a fundraising email, quote, saying, quote, rather, I am not afraid of what's to come. Former president has denied all wrongdoing. Democratic Senator Elizabeth Warren spoke about the indictment on CBS Mornings earlier. Yeah, that's a very sober time for our country, a, a real moment in history. And yet, I think the most important part of this is to say that a foundational piece of our democracy is holding, that it is possible to have an independent investigation, to go wherever the facts lead, and then to follow the process through. And that's going to mean to follow it all the way through, including assuming there is an arrest, if there's a trial, Donald Trump can plead not guilty, he can bring whatever evidence he wants. For more on this, we want to bring in CBS News political contributors Antoine Seawright and Leslie Sanchez. Antoine is a Democratic strategist and Leslie is a Republican strategist. So Antoine, first question to you. Um, is this a gift for Donald Trump? Will this embolden his base of voters? He already sent out a fundraising letter. Raising lots of money. We have heard through sources that he relishes the uh, appearance before the American people in front of that courthouse uh, because he knows that he will be able to use that imagery to say, this is them going after me and look at me, I'm fighting back for you. So there are a couple ways to look at this, Vlad and Emery, and thank you for having me. Uh, number one, Donald Trump has a core base of supporters in his party and in this country who I believe are politically unmovable. So no matter what happens, these people will stick by him through thick or thin. That is how he has, I think, captured the political moment. And that's why as Democrats, we have to be very, very careful not to get caught up into what the legal system will ultimately have to do when it comes to its job and instead staying laser focused on what the American people want because people are sometimes uh, disconnected from the Trump conversations versus the, the things that really happen in their lives. I oftentimes say a different conversation on K Street than our street. But one of the most, uh, I think, important things for people to realize as a black person, I remember in 1989 uh, when Donald Trump took out a full page ad against now the exonerated five and calling for their calling for the death penalty. He will have to then make his way through that same courthouse. I think that's perspective. Second perspective, I think we all remember Donald Trump running a presidential campaign to solidify his base, calling for the locking up of his political opponents, Secretary Clinton, Barack Obama, and Joe Biden. We remember those things. And so for many of us, the conversation is going on uh, today and will be throughout the weekend. Justice delayed is not necessarily justice denied and no one is above the law, not even a former president. So, Leslie, as you know, we've been hearing from uh, Republicans, uh, high-profile Republicans, many of them just echoing sort of this, uh, the same level of outrage over this indictment. Um, what sort of impact do you think this could have on the 2024 race? Because what we've seen now is even possible political opponents, like Ron DeSantis, having to send out a statement saying how outraged he is and that he won't help and he won't sort of extradite the president, the former president from Florida, should he be called to do that. I don't think anybody can minimize the political ripple and really almost a, a big wave that is happening within the Republican Party right now uh, with this indictment. Um, there's a few ways to think about it. One, it puts any other Republican contender who is not Donald Trump in a very difficult position, per your point. They have to come back and rally around the president. But why are they rallying around the president? Because this is seen so above, we talk about you, no one is above the law, but no one is below the law either. And what that means is these is to be personally persecuted uh, for, for minimal things. And I think if you think back to, and, and Republicans will say, you know, where was former FBI Director James Comey when they talked about no reasonable prosecutor would go after then Secretary Clinton for, you know, for all of her emails. And, and there was plenty of, a, a mountain of evidence, potential evidence then, to prosecute her, but no one did that. And now you look, and it looks like the politics of personal destruction. What that means is there's a lot of people who now do not believe there is a balance and a fair judicial system, um, very much contrary to that. And when that happens, they are all rallying behind one effort. And that effort right now is going to be former President Trump.
He's going to raise the most money. He's going to have the highest profile. And I'll end with this. The reason that Donald Trump did so well in 2016 was not because everyone favored Donald Trump. is because there was a collective energy against Hillary Clinton. If that same mass comes together in frustration to what is now seen as a very biased judicial system and a failed Democratic leadership, I think you really have a, a potent uh, mix there. Leslie, let me follow up on, on that. Um, and uh, you perhaps saw that interview we did with Senator Elizabeth Warren, uh, where she didn't put her finger on the scale one way or another. She just said she wants to see the process play out. But now you have Republicans actively suggesting that our judicial process is flawed. They've already suggested right. in many instances that our elections are fraudulent. Um, the pro former president is calling for violence in the streets if this happens. Shouldn't Republicans, at least, even if they are in Donald Trump's camp, take a step back and say, look, uh, let's see what Alvin Bragg actually has, because none of us know. I think that, you know, people have already made a determination and a decision on that. So one, no one's going to condone violence. That's that's just a non-starter. Doesn't matter what your party ID is, that's not where we are. Let's look at the political, the politicized context um, and, and what you're saying. She's saying, I, I, well, we, how would she say it? That the judicial system is holding. Uh, Republicans would argue it, that it's not, that it's highly fractured, it's highly politicized. Republicans I spoke to, state party leaders this morning, were saying this just folds very nicely into the elite law schools, like the protests you had uh, this month at Stanford Law School, you had last year at Yale Law School, where now we're seeing activist prosecutors. Do you see what I mean, Vlad? They're mm -hmm. moving into this line of thinking that I think can be uh, a, a really dangerous area for us to be moving into politically when there's not faith in our judicial system, not faith in fairness and, and security in our electoral system. And now we're reaping a lot of that. And I, I feel it's going to it's going to be a lot more tumultuous in this election cycle than anybody. Anticipated. Unless, of course, stuff comes out that album because we, we don't know what's under indictment. We don't and, know. It, it, and you end up with this, egg on your face because it I turns out know, to be really bad. Right. And I don't know how much sort of lack of faith there is. But we do know that people keep, that, that certain politicians keep telling us mm -hmm. not to believe in the system. But That's Antoine, right. I want to ask you, how do Democrats play this? You know, Vlad talked about, um, sorry, who'd you have on earlier? Uh, Elizabeth Warren. Elizabeth Warren saying, just let it play out. Uh, you know, how should Democrats handle this? Well, I think we certainly have to let it, play, let it play out. We've seen from previous elections that sometimes the American people want us to stay focused on the things that have a direct impact on their life. But And part of that is talking about the judicial system. Now, as an African-American from the South, I have to laugh out loud when I hear people say that all of a sudden the judicial system is flawed <laughs> because it impacts someone of their own interest. We've seen in my community time and time again where the system will bend for some and break for us. And so all of a sudden the system cannot be flawed because it's applicable to someone who's of like political interest. What we do have to make certain is that when someone does something against the law, regardless of their political affiliations, regardless of race, gender, all those things, that the system holds them accountable. It would be an act of political malpractice if Donald Trump or anyone else who breaks the law does not be held accountable for what they uh, have done. In fact, the legal community, my friends, call it a miscarriage of justice when someone is not punished for the crimes they have been committed, they have been accused of committing. Antoine Z. Wright and Leslie Sanchez, thank you so much.